Hi, no. Does that work? Hello. Yes, I think that works. Hello everyone, hi. We're good to start, yay. Um, yeah, hello everyone, thank you so much for coming. Uh, my name is Leah and I'm gonna be the chair, hi. Um, I'm gonna be cha the chair of this ABM today. Um, agenda is there, was also published online, so if anybody wants to, wants to read through the materials as we go. Uh, yes, hi Daniel. Um, please feel free to check them out online. Um, very quick housekeeping, uh, there's no fire alarm scheduled, so if you do hear a fire alarm, please run for your life. Um, orderly manner, obviously, we're trying not to, to kill anyone on the way out, but yeah. Um, also, there's no break scheduled, so if you need to go to the bathroom, please just do so. Uh, also, this is live streamed on Facebook and YouTube, so send your family the link if they always wanted to watch. Um, there is a two minute limit on speeches, which means that I will cut you off after those two minutes. Um, this is nothing personal, please do not take it personal. There is a safe space policy in, in place, which means we please be respectful to each other, no hate speech, um, all of that. Just the, the bottom line is just be nice, be respectful, we all like each other here. Also stay on topic. Um, I will also cut you off if you're uh, giving a speech and it just goes completely off topic. Um, if you want to if you want to speak on a matter, if you want to ask a question, if you want to have an argument, if you want to raise uh, a procedural motion, all of that, please put up your hand and leave it raised until someone with a microphone is there. Also, please do not raise your hand like, like this, but just put it up properly so I can actually see you. And when you do speak, um, just state your name, uh, like your full name first and last name, uh, and committee if you're part of any committee, societies, groups, sports clubs, all of that. Um, so for example, in my case, that will be Lea Ratai, Town Student Council. Very easy. Just a motion for the minute. And then the quorum is 2.50, as everyone knows, we currently need this quorum. Um, if we do lose this quorum, the ABM ends immediately and all other matters that haven't been discussed will be moved to the next student council meeting. That is pretty much, oh, and also because we've got a few questions about that, why the motions are always last. Um, this basically has to do with the fact that the ABM has a very precise function, which is to discuss the state of the association. And there is rules that govern that we need to get through the required stuff first, which is the annual report, time statement, all of that. So we need to take care of that first before we can go on to discuss the motions. Is everyone happy with the agenda as it stands? Yeah, cool. Then we're gonna be moving on to approving the minutes of the ABM 2019. Um, again, those minutes can be found online. I assume you've all read them. Uh, <laughs> So if no one has any objections against those minutes, any questions regarding the minutes? No, cool. Um, then, oh, also just a general point because I feel that's important. If you want to vote, voting will happen with the yellow voting card there in front of you. So if you uh, want to vote yes, you hold up the card and when I say hold up your card, it's very not, it's not that difficult. You're all in university, I all expect you to understand this. Uh, but yeah, just hold up your voting card. Um, and also, yes, because a lot of you have not been in contact that much with student council or student politics in general, there is a thing called procedural motions that can be called for a range of different reasons. If you want to do that, you have to um, essentially stand up for dramatic effect or just raise your hand and shout and say point of order procedural motion. You then need to do have a need to say what your procedural motion is. This could be, for example, move directly to a vote on a matter. And then a, you need someone to second that, which means to support that you support your idea, essentially. Those are the calls. Uh, yes, now approval of the minutes of the ABM. Um, again, any questions on that matter? Nope, uh, thank you very much. We are then be moving on to a vote. Everyone that approves the minutes as they stand, please vote yes now. Thank you. Um, please vote no if you don't approve the minutes as they stand. And raise your hand now for abstentions. Okay, thank you very much. With that, the minutes from the ABM 2019 passed. 
we will now be moving on to the minutes of the general meeting that happened in March 2019. Are there any questions regarding that? Nope. Cool. Moving on to your vote again. If you approve the minutes as they stand, please raise your card now. Thank you very much. If you don't approve the minutes as they stand, please raise your card now. And if you're abstaining, please raise your card now. Thank you very much. And with that, the minutes pass as well. And last but not least, the minutes from the general meeting in November. Are there any questions regarding that? Nope. Cool. Uh, please raise your card now if you approve them as they stand. Thank you very much. If you don't approve them, please raise your card now. Thank you. And if you abstain, please raise your card now. Perfect. Thank you very much. And we got that sorted. We'll then be moving on to the annual report and financial statement, which will be presented by Cecilia and Don. Hello, um, I'm Cecilia Wolbach, Group President. Uh, because the report's been up since November, I'll just go run quickly through some highlights. Uh, first of all, Good Union Brew, as of last year, is now under uh, our Sussel management. So if you're not aware, you can book up the space for events. And it's open until 10 p.m. in the evening. Um, we had a successful uh, set of students last year, both with uh, Dogs and Dominoes and the Ponies. Um, we now have a, our own physical space in Foster Hill, uh, and also so that we can meet with students, but also uh, that we can use that is fully our grounds. Uh, we also have increased, had increased financial support to societies and clubs at the beginning the moment. I can give you the exact figures, but it's up from the year before. Okay, sorry, no, I can't actually find the slide, it's there. Is it just me or is it beeping? It's pretty good. Uh, there were some great sports successes. I'm sure um, if you're interested, Ayala might know some of them. So, we also won Granite City Challenge last year. Um, I know this is meant to be a report for last year, but we also won it this year, by the way. Uh, the uh, apparently nothing happened here. <laughs> um, students fundraised um, for local charities over 145,000 pounds. And it hasn't, um, everything hasn't been distributed yet, but it's all going to local charities, so well done to students fundraising. Uh, we also had um, two active campaigns, the Pass and Field Divestment, which was a great success, and the graduation fee, which means that you no longer have to pay to, to graduate and attend the ceremony, although you still have to pay for the rope rental. Uh, we're also in the process of implementing the transit review, um, as you, that was passed last year, and it will be implemented starting the next sabbatical election and uh, further as the year progresses. We, yeah. Sorry, for, for the sub support, it's gone up from 52,000 for uh, sport teams to 56,000 last year, and for societies, it went up from 29,000 pounds to 30 pounds, uh, 30,000 pounds. And those are just the highlights of the accounts. If you have any questions, please let me know. And Don over there will be going through the finance uh, report. Hi, John Matthews, um, external trustee with Speciality in Finance and Commercial, who have uh, point of reference the accounts of from the 1st of August to the end of July 19, uh, and the responsibility of the board to find out those accounts, which is done on behalf of the president. For the year of operations, there was a surplus fund made of 69,000, of which 34,000 was related to restricted activities, meaning that there is specific source of funding for those and they have to be used within that source fund. A non-restricted surplus of 35,000. This isn't keeping with the budgetary assumptions at the time 
as is the level of reserves at the end of the year was 274,000, which we believe to be sufficient as the ongoing operation should any cash flow concerns arise. Of notable differences in the year, we brought in Union Brew. So the first full year of operation for Union Brew, it had a loss of 23,000. Again, this is in expected territory and we look ahead into 2019 and 2020 for it to be break even in the full year. The accounts were signed off by Henderson Logie with no audit findings. Are there any questions regarding the financing? Yes, I do. Oh, yeah, sorry, microphone. Uh, Union Brew to be absolutely profitable, like what year? From <laughs> you didn't say. Yeah, so break even in 1920, turning a profit in 2021. Are there any more questions? Uh, yeah. Thanks, uh, George Taylor, Aberdeen University Labour Students. Um, with regards to Union Brew, you said it's going to break even by this year, 1920. How are you going to get it to be profitable? So there is a management and strategic plan for the operation. The first year of any commercial operation, such as uh, the establishment of a bar, you would expect it to be the least successful because you're trying to build up uh, a clientele and a, and a base as you go through the second year of operation you get to know the mix of the sales and then into year three once you know the clientele the sell and stock levels that would be when actual profitability will turn the profit level of the sales is about 60 percent which is in keeping at market levels okay are there any more questions Hi there, Daniel Connor, Society's Union Chair. Um, if I'm right, sorry, I'm not actually sure if I heard this correctly, but I believe that the amount that was allocated to sports and societies was increased in the case of societies from £29,000 to £30,000, that's correct, yeah? And in the case of uh, sports, I'm not sure about this, but from 53000 to 56000 is that correct? Yeah? Right, okay, good. Um, what? Why, why was that decided to do so? Why was it decided that it would increase sports by 3,000 and societies by 1,000? Did you want that? Or? Cecilia Wolbeck, student president. Sport is simply more costly. That is the simple answer. It costs more to run. Hello, uh, Isla Scott, sports officer. I mean, Cecilia's right, sport is uh, simply just more expensive to run. I mean, for instance, we have 56 sports clubs, most of whom compete weekly, if not bi-weekly, and they're having to travel down to places like Edinburgh, Glasgow, and as you can imagine, being in Aberdeen, that's quite an expenditure for clubs. So I believe that's, oh, sorry, it's a bit loud. I believe that's the reasoning behind that. Okay, does that answer your question? Yeah, thank you. Okay, are there any more questions regarding the financial report? Nope, I think we will then be moving on to the affiliation. Cecilia? Cecilia Baldeck, you're in president. We are currently affiliated to uh, the British University for College Sport, so BUC, the Scottish Student Board, so the SSS, and the National Union of Students, so NUS. Thank you very much. And then the appointment of auditor update, Cecilia as well. Yes, so Cecilia Wolbeck, student president, as required by the constitution, the council presented here in the report 
have been audited by our external auditors, uh, which is MHA and the Stone Laundry. Um, the full audit is that on page, I think, 820 of the stock report that it counts, and I can confirm that there was no issues was raised by the auditors as a result of the review. Um, as we've also been with these auditors for the past four years, we will be uh, starting a tendering process. We will be proceeding with them. Okay. Yeah, sorry, if I can just interrupt there. Daniel, going back to your original question, um, I didn't answer that properly, apologies. Um, the reason that sports increase more in the site is because when everyone affiliates to a sports club, they pay a £15 sports union membership fee. For societies, that is lower, it's £3. So whatever we get in in that money, it goes back out. So that's why it's been increased at a different rate. Okay, are there any questions regarding the affiliation draw point of the project or update? Nope, cool. And then the policy update, if you're ready. Okay, so this is my old back from Paxton. Um, I believe behind me we have the policy hub where you can see all the active policies at the moment. You can also see which sabbatical officers are taking a lead on those um, policies. So if you have any questions, you know who to get in touch with and they will also be reporting on the progress of um, these policies as they progress. Uh, I also want to add an update for a specific policy right now because it was passed at a general meeting in March 2019, which is the BDS movement uh, motion, which has been overturned by the trustee board, because as Alsa must and can only act in accordance with its constitutional powers, which is what everyone has read. Um, and uh, we received legal advice that suggested that in supporting the BDS movement, uh, could not be satisfied that we were doing this. And just in case everyone's confused, uh, this is the board court divesting sanction uh, policy that I think is online or not. Oh, it's not online because it's not an actual policy or a policy that we um, have. Okay. okay, are there any questions regarding the policy update? Uh, yeah, Alpha, just mind, take a second. Okay, so Alba Environment and Ethics Committee. Um, I was wondering how exactly the BDS motion is not in line with the constitutional powers, as you mentioned, of ARSA. And then I have a follow-up question to that. Sorry, could you speak a little bit louder? Um, Sorry. Um, how, does it, how does the BDS motion not fall in line with ARSA's constitutional powers? Uh, because we're a charity and we cannot um, know for certain that by uh, having this policy we are not breaking uh, the legal requirements, entrance requirements of being a charity. Can I follow up on that? Um, has this then sent back to students to amend the motion? And since it was voted on and passed last year, how is it that you're going to implement the sentiment behind this motion? Because obviously this was voted on, so the students wanted it. Some version of this should be implemented, I assume. How are you going to make that happen? Well, as, as students and as individuals, we can campaign for issues that you're passionate about. Um, just because students campaign about, for students to campaign about an issue doesn't have to be an official ALSA policy. So if you want to campaign for it, we can give you support on that. If you want to campaign on different issues raised within the motion. But as a motion, we cannot have it as an actual policy. because you can't be sure. Can you name the committee, please? Oh, sorry. Um, Joanne Ibsen, I'm the treasurer of the Housing Society. I was just wondering, you said that it's because you can't be sure that it would be within your legal ability as a charity. Like, surely you would have to be sure in order to say that you can't implement it. I just think it's weird that you say that it's because you can't be sure. Sylvia, student president, I'm going to be completely honest. I don't think I understand your question. Would you maybe rephrase it? It's, you said that it's because you can't be sure. Shouldn't it be that you're sure you can't do it? Or am I just misunderstanding you? Um, 
what is it exactly that goes against your ability as a charity? Or we are not sure. So the role that your president, we're not sure because he's an unregulated body. The BDS movement is an unregulated body, and we've not been sure um, that what they're doing or what we would be aligning ourselves with could potentially conflict with our um, requirement as a uh, charity. Can which I is why I raised that as individuals, we can still campaign on issues based within uh, the motion, but as a policy, we cannot have it. Uh, wait, sh sh uh, sorry. <laughs> Shouldn't it then, I, I mean, I understand that when motions are kind of problematic in that way, what you do is that you send that back to the students who proposed it and figure out a way around it since the sentiment's still kind of the same. So shouldn't it be the case that AUSA continues to engage with the students who originally proposed the motion to figure out a way to work with that that may fall more in line with AUSA's goals and powers and so on? Cecilia Volbeck, Mr. President. If that's something that you want to do, I'm sure we can engage with you to find out how, if we can rewrite in a way that complies. But I think that's a discussion we should have outside of this, if you want to go into details of how to rewrite the motion. Yes, please. We would like to do that. Okay, thank you very much. Are there any other questions regarding the policy update? Nope, okay, thank you very much. We will then be moving on to our opening the floor to question from the trustee board. Little note on that, all the trustees are on the stage right now except for the three student trustees that were ratified uh, at the beginning of this year. As they've not had the chance to attend any trustee meetings, um, they will not be sitting on stage as they can't give any updates. Um, but they're also happy to answer your questions if you have any for them. So there's just like the three guys in the first row. It's there. Okay, are there any questions? No. Okay, Kev, they will now be introducing themselves. Hello again, Cecilia Volbeck, student president and chair of the trustee board. Okay, hello again, Ayla Scott, sports officer, also on the trustee board. Kathleen, student trustee on the trustee board. Alexander, welfare officer, trustee board member. Louise Henard, uh, communities officer, sabbatical uh, member of the trustee board. Hi, John Matthews, external trustee. Hi, I'm Sandy McKinnon, external trustee and former sabbatical. And I'm Daria Kolova, I'm the education officer and a member of the trustee board. Hi everyone. Oh, that's crikey, that's loud. Hiya, I'm Anthony, I'm one of the new trustees. Send me a message if you've got any questions. Hi, my name is Casey, I'm a new trustee. My name is Barrett Braun. I'm also a student trustee. Okay, and now we'll open the floor to questions you have for the trustees. Yes, over there. Uh, Andrew Fry, Vice President of Students for Independence. Um, so. The University of Aberdeen's 2020 diversity calendar acknowledges that February is when the UK celebrates LGBT plus history month. Um, it also states that there's gonna be an exhibition of notable LGBT plus figures, and it doesn't say anything else. Um, I'd like to know if anyone knows here when this exhibition is gonna happen, um, and whether you think that this is a really a, uh, a sufficient acknowledgement of LGBT plus history month. Uh, I don't think it is. I'd like to know if AUSA is organizing any events separately from the university, um, given that there seems to be a massive lack and if anybody knows if and when the university will fly the rainbow pl pride flag from the top of Cromwell Tower this month. Um, since you're still present, I think that was three questions. Okay. No. <laughs> You're striking, I got them all. Um, so first, I am not aware of any exhibition that the university is doing, but I see that you bring that up because we do have um, semi-regular equality, diversity, inclusion meetings. So this is something definitely that we can bring up. And um, since I do bring other students to those meetings, that it's
but yeah, so we do support the LGBT plus forum if they want, and they're hosting their daily events. Uh, so if for specific events, you can find our website, regardless of what else is doing, but I don't think the sabbaticals is hosting any specific events. Um, I don't remember what the third question was, I'm sorry. Um, the third question was, let me just check. Um, do you know um, whether, so it was whether ISA was organizing any events and do you know whether the university is gonna be flying the Rainbow Pride flag on top of Cromwell Tower? Because they have done that in the past and since it's LGBT plus history month, it would seem appropriate, so I'm just wondering, I mean, we're 11 days into the month now and I haven't seen anything in recognition of LGBT History Month, so I think that's quite concerning. I'm just wondering if I can do anything about that. Cecilia Boldex, Senior President, I'll definitely email and contact the, the university uh, tomorrow once I'm back into office and let you know any updates um, of how that goes. Is that okay, or would you like more information? Okay, the next question up there. Okay. Magnus Hogany, Aberdeen Labour Students. Um, there's a question for Isla Scott. Uh, for those of us who had the beer confiscated, can we have it back after the uh, AGM? <laughs> Please. <laughs> Hello. Uh, is that giving our beer back? Uh, <laughs> uh, hello, Isla Scott, sports officer. Um, given that you are on university property, you should know that you're not permitted any drink, uh, so you will not be getting it back at the end. That's the same for anyone who I've confiscated from. University rules, not ours. If I spot you with it, I will eat it. Thank you. <laughs> yep. Um. Uh, this is unrelated, just before. Um, Matthew John Guys, Kerr. Guys, can you be quiet so we can actually hear what people are asking? Thank you. Matthew John Kerr, president of the Circus Society. Um, I have a question just for the board in general. At the moment, as far as I'm aware, Aberdeen University is still a pro-choice organization as a whole. Unfortunately, as far as I'm aware, is also still affiliating with the Life Ethics Society, which in this honorable gentleman's opinion is a thinly veiled excuse for a society that is very clearly just pro-life. I wondered if you had any opinions on to what extent it's appropriate that the university can both claim to be pro-choice whilst also affiliating with society, which is obviously the opposite of that. Hello again, I'm a Scott Sports Officer. Uh, very good question. Um, I guess the reason that the pro-choice society were allowed to affiliate is because we are open to all uh, and for them to not affiliate would be discriminatory. Uh, they are, oh sorry, I think I said pro-life. The pro-life society were allowed to affiliate. Oh, life ethics. Sorry, my apologies guys. <laughs> um, it's quite late in the day. Uh, does that answer your question? I guess I just wonder whether or not it's appropriate for the university to claim and put on its website that it has a pro-choice policy, if that is the case. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's dualistic thinking. It's almost, you know, double think. On one hand, we claim to support something. On the other hand, we only support it 50%. Mm. Okay, so firstly, sorry, that was a bit loud again. The university and AUSA are separate, so the Life Ethics Society are affiliated to AUSA, not the university. You are right in that we did have a OUSA is pro-choice policy that's currently not implemented. Um, it is in the process of being rewritten, uh, re rewritten, and it will be brought to the March Student Council. Yes, question over there. Hi, I'm Perry Delkick, Society's Union. Um, as far as I was concerned, the pro-choice policy was illegal. It specifically violated the Equality Act 2010, so um, I was just wondering, like, I just wanted to clarify 
I'm sure that's the reason. And how do you propose that you're going to implement another pro-choice policy given the fact it violates the Equality Act 2010, which says no one should be discriminated against on the basis of philosophical or religious views? Hello, uh, Isla Scott, sports officer. You're right, I, think, I believe that was the reason why the original policy was rejected, that we reworded in a way that it will not breach uh, the, was it the Human Rights Act you mentioned? The Equality Act 2010. So it will be rewritten in a way that does not impact student rights or freedoms. Does that make sense? Hi, Paul Seanoid, uh, Society's Union. Uh, to give a bit of context, originally the Society's Union rejected the Life Ethics Society. However, there was actually a lawsuit, and we lost. And because of the, of the act, so they were actually put in a position where um, the reason that they were rejected wasn't actually legal. And so it was specifically, you know, to, just to give context why we're referring to the laws and so forth. Not necessary question, but okay. Are there, yep, yeah, Rosie. Um, Rosie from the Gaudi. Um, just following on what he said, so to clarify, that lawsuit was for seven grand, right? That's at least the documents that I saw, it was for seven grand. Does that mean that we gave the pro, the, a mem sorry, does that mean we gave a, a specific member of the pro-life society, sorry, the life ethics society, seven grand? <laughs> Did we give them seven grand? Is that just like if we lost that lawsuit? Um, very quick reminder, please remain <coughs> respectful. Um, I mentioned that at the beginning. Sorry. Just sorry. But like, my question still stands. Did we give them, did we give a member of the life ethics community seven grand because we lost that lawsuit? I was Scott, sports officer. No, we did not. Okay, did we give them any money? <laughs> yes. Can you tell me how much it was? Uh, no, because I don't think that's appropriate to discuss at an AGM, Rosie. Uh, but, but you guys are... Oh, sorry, sure. I'm just being told that it's actually illegal and it breaches disclosure. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to make you be illegal, sorry. I was just asking. Uh, just to clarify, so the majority of the cost was to do with our own legal support to make sure that we got the legal stance. So the amount that was paid was part of a non-disclosure, so we can't comment on the actual value. There was a question up there for a while. Uh, Pano Puhakka, uh, Young Europeans, Aberdeen. Uh, you mentioned that you can't discriminate against anybody based on their beliefs or philosophical um, values. Is there a limit you can, like is anything, can anybody just like, can somebody have a white supremacy society? with Alsa, are you just like, oh, we can't discriminate against that? Sorry, could you repeat the question? So, so is there no limit what you can have under the protection of the Equality Act? Can you have a white supremacy society because that's your philosophical value? I am. Um, the, the law is essentially the, the boundaries that you work in. So if something was to be illegal under UK law, then it would be absolutely appropriate to have a policy that was in keeping with it. And actually, a policy cannot be in breach of UK law. Just a uh, general reminder to everyone, please. I know your opinions about stuff, but please be quiet so we can actually hear what people are saying, uh, especially on the stage. Um, yep, Paul. Um, I would... Paul Sinoid, uh, Society's Union. I would just like to remind people that this was a decision based on the judge. That would be a question for the judge. That, like, well, Is this a the question? Judgment that was that, made. That, does your statement have a well, question? Well, I'm Society's Union. We're the people that govern over the, a lot of this area. And so I just want to clarify things for their understanding. And that, that this was pro the, the court from a lawsuit. I don't know why you're fooling the people that were forced to do something from a lawsuit. It doesn't make much sense. They didn't do this willfully. It was after the result of a lawsuit. So if you want to like dispute what the lawsuit said, I don't know why you would go after them just all right we now be moving back to questions to the trustee board are there any more of those over there hi uh, David education committee 
Um, I just wanted to ask why um, I was a funds the Gaudi when in the bylaws it states that it's not meant to fund student groups? Hello, Aysa. Uh, Aysa, I love sports officer. Um, so you're right, we do fund the Gaudi. Um, a decision was made, I believe, three or four years ago by the staff team in those years that due to the Gaudi's fun, uh, funds, they wouldn't have been able to keep running. So the sabbatical team three or four years ago made the decision to fund them, despite the bylaws, to enable the paper to keep running. Now, I have been taking the lead on the Gaudi this year, and I've been speaking to both editors, and we've agreed that next year the funding will be halved, and the following year they will receive no funding at all, so that they are in line with the bylaws. Does that answer your question? Yeah, up there, another question. Um, also, just a quick reminder to please hold up your voting card, Pi, and not just your arm. Yep, Thomas, I can see you. Um, but yeah, no, just a general reminder so I can see you better in the face of heads. Hi, um, Alba, Environment and Ethics Committee. Um, I'm just, I just want to go back to that again. But surely a society dedicated to pressure people into having babies uh, is kind of discriminatory in nature and potentially violates the safe space policy that we have in place. So I was wondering what you have to say about that. Um, is this a question for the trustee board or about the nature of the issue? About how can you have that society in place when it, it clearly goes against safe space policy, in my opinion? Hello, I love sports officer again. It went to court, the decision was made, and they were allowed to affiliate. Okay, yeah, Tomas. Tomas Escuti, Vice Chair of the Communities Committee. I have a question for Cecilia. I don't know if you remember, last year there was a motion aimed at fighting or at lobbying a first bus company to reduce their bus fares. I'm sure you all know that the bus fares in Aberdeen are quite expensive if you compare them to other cities like Edinburgh or Glasgow. So I would like you to update me in the campaign that Alsa was meant to lead. Um, Cecilia Wobby, Mr. President, I will be passing it on to Louise, who's taking lead on this policy. Louise, Communities Officer. Um, so I'm the sabbatical uh, officer in charge of this motion. Uh, that is something that I've been working on with the other um, sabbatical officers from other unions around Aberdeen. So that includes uh, NESCO and that includes um, RGU. Um, we have drafted a letter um, which will be sent uh, to First Bus to arrange a meeting, uh, which will be a joint meeting between uh, all the student unions. Um, we also, I am also working with my communities committee uh, to um, gather more feedback uh, from students as to pr uh, pr prove uh, to First Bus that it's uh, something that um, definitely needs to be uh, addressed. Um, but you can see more on uh, the motion, the work that I've been doing on the policies updates, which are uh, online on my blog. Okay, more questions for the trustee board. Anyone? Nope. Okay. Um, and that means that concludes that part, and we'll be moving on to the motions. General reminder, uh, just how the motions work, is the proposer of the motion is going to introduce the motion. Um, then you will have the chance to ask any questions, clarifying questions um, about anything that is written in the motion. After all the questions, there will be a speech against the motion if, if present, um, as the proposal of the motion counts as a speech for the motion. And after that, there will be equal amounts of speeches for and against the motion until we get to a point where there are no more speeches and we vote on the issue. All the, um, all the motions, both those three, um, they require a simple majority and all the bylaw amendments a two-thirds majority. 
Are there any just general questions before we uh, go on about the procedure? Um, yeah. Just separate, yes. Um, yes, so after the motion is proposed, you can ask questions about it. So the first motion we have, just one second. First motion uh, is from Luis. Uh, please propose the original one. Can you please propose your original motion? We talk about amendments later. I mean, better? Now I can just only read part of it, but. Yeah, also, uh, General Ryan, you can also find them on the outside page um, because now you're obviously not able to see all of that. Uh, Louise, community officer, just as a clarification, am I proposing, am I presenting the motion as, uh, without the amendment? Okay. Uh, so this motion is uh, submitted by myself and consulted with the Environment and Ethics Committee. We believe that environmental sustainability awareness and knowledge is crucial in our times. Uh, we are in an age of climate crisis, which means that we need to embed sustainability in everything we do. Uh, not only what we learn, but how we learn. Um, and this motion, we hope if it's passed, um, we is for ALSA to do more in terms of providing students training uh, to incorporate sustainability in their role. So that, that would be for class representative or for school conveners who would want to, ha to be more proactive uh, regarding campaigning for environmental sustainability. Um, but also for the university to provide more information when it comes to low carbon uh, employers and to encourage and to help uh, students who um, wish to be part of the just transition movement, which is a movement uh, who um, acknowledge that for the planet to be greener, it also needs to uh, incorporate the safety and the well-being of the workers currently in um, like high uh, carbon sectors. Um, we hope that with this motion, um, we'll also have more opportunities outside of formal education, um, such as volunteering opportunities, but also... Please uh, wrap it up. Wrap it up. Okay. Um, yes. Um, so this motion is to embed sustainability in education, whether it's how we do things or what we learn or what we do outside of uh, university um, in volunteering activities. Okay, thank you very much. And then there were amendments omitted also by you, which you can introduce very quickly. Um, I'm, I'm not gonna make that bigger because it's important that you see the highlighted parts. So essentially, um, Louise has submitted an amendment ver amended version of um, this motion and all the parts that are in yellow are the ones that got changed from the original one. Um, yes, the amendment is uh, mainly uh, a question of um, the resolve two. Uh, after discussing with school conveners and the education committee, they um, had some concerns on why um, environmental sustainability training uh, should be uh, pushed on their training as they are um, already, um, they already do a lot of work. Uh, so we have submitted an amendment to make clear that the training would be um, for guidance and for support if uh, school conveners or class representative would wish to campaign for these issues rather than uh, adding more work uh, on their already uh, massive workload um, and then just correcting typos. Okay, so before we do anything else, we will now be voting on which version we would like to hear. Um, so everyone that would like to hear the original motion, please raise your card now. Okay, and everyone that wants to hear the amended version, please raise your card now. Yep. Okay, thank you very much. We now then be using this version. Okay, are there any questions regarding this motion? Nope. Uh, 
Sorry, one question. Yep, Jack. Thank you. To what extent do you actually believe, th sorry, Jack Bog, debater, uh, to what extent do you actually believe that this will go particularly far away to making sure that the university is a rel like both as an institution and as an environment is actually relatively si sustainable, considering the relatively positive relationship that it enjoys with BP? Um, thank you for your question. Um, yes, it's going to be a very difficult fight uh, when it comes to um, for the university to um, to limit their ties with BP. However, it's not the um, um, objective of this motion. The objective is, of this motion is to offer the alternative uh, rather than just focus on high carbon sector. Uh, I hope that answers your question. Thank you very much. Are there any other questions? Um, and just as a reminder, these are clarifying questions and not arguments disguised as questions. Please. Any more questions? Yep. Uh, yep. Green shirt first and then Derek. George Taylor, Aberdeen, Leb students. Um, you mentioned, and it's mentioned in the motion, the phrase uh, high carbon uh, employers, high carbon. Could you just define that phrase for us? Um, yes, so the way that we understand it is would be f uh, high carbon uh, organizations such as extraction, so oil and gas, uh, and uh, companies that actually extract fossil fuels. Uh, in comparison to uh, companies who would uh, focus on carbon sequestra uh, capture or carbon sequestra sequestration. Is there, is there a follow-up question on the same? So this motion wouldn't cover carbon, uh, carbon emitters companies which uh, produce high carbon footprints such as shippage and haulage, is that correct? Can you repeat the last bit? Sorry, I, I didn't So this properly. motion is only aimed at carbon extractors such as oil companies and not at carbon emitters such as shipping companies? Um, the motion is not targeting high carbon employers. It's about increasing low carbon employers. Uh, with that. So that would not even, we, we are not looking to decrease high carbon uh, employers. We are looking uh, to offer more guidance for students who would be interested to be um, joining low carbon employers. Derek, your question for something? Uh, yeah, I, I just want to ask uh, Derek Gardner, Societies Union and various others, um, I just want to ask how you're planning to uh, implement this because it's it seems a bit strange that you can have this as an interdisciplinary thing when uh, would it, for instance, if you were targeting a science degree, would it be a science-based course? If you were targeting, say, a law degree, would it be a course in environmental law that you would make everybody attend? How, how practically exactly would you implement this sort of thing? Beautiful. Um, thank you, uh, Daria Kolova, Education Officer. The way that we would go about implementing this is, of course, in partnership, not just the Communities Officer. We're working on this. The Education Officer and the Education Committee will also contribute. Um, we have, uh, I would say, a good working relationship with the University Career Service, and uh, we were happy to see some commitments to sustainability in the new strategy. So what we're hoping to do is to try and put concentrated effort into lobbying the university, uh, into looking into those alternatives and providing that option there for students and just developing an attitude that is more environmentally conscious rather than um, forcing students to do certain things. I hope that makes sense. Thank you very much. Are there any other questions regarding this motion? No, okay. Are there any speeches against this motion? 
Also, no, we'll be then moving on to a vote. This will require a simple majority. So could everyone that votes yes for this motion please raise your card now? Okay, everyone that is voting no. And everyone that's abstaining? Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, the motion passed, by the way, if that wasn't obvious. Okay, moving on to circuit laundry motion. Either of the proposers, welcome to Joseph Ali. Apparently not. Just one second. See you please. Um, Cecilia Wolbeckson, President, as the proposer and the secretary that's not here, Barbara Cedar, I am just presenting this. Um, so the motion states that the circuit laundry, the laundry provider acts student accommodation. Um, it's the only one, uh, they don't always work, the machines don't always work properly and the results are unsatisfactory and it has not been fixed despite multiple reports of the faults. Um, and the council believes that there should be a campaign to bring an improvement of the laundry facilities and should not have to pay unreasonable fees for the poor quality that students do receive by these laundry uh, services and that the monopoly of circuit laundry is detrimental and costly to students, both in terms of time and money. Um, therefore, uh, council believes that ALSA should lobby university, AGM results, ALSA should lobby university to reconsider the position of circuit laundry and that we should lobby the university, put pressure on circuit laundry to deliver high quality and more affordable services. Any questions? Any questions? Yep, Anthony. Uh, hey, uh, Anthony, uh, Labour students. Um, I'm just basing this on what I saw on Facebook, but I saw that Liam McCabe, Liam McCabe who's the president of uh, NUS Scotland, offered that um, this, as uh, part of this motion and part of this project, uh, you could join the nationwide campaign to, to get better washing machines and, and fight against circuit laundry, essentially. But based on what I saw uh, in your reply on the Facebook comment, you'd rather not work um, on a national level, but just focus uh, on an Aberdeen-based level. I'd like to ask why that is. Um, Cecilia Wolbeck, Student President, please correct me if I'm not actually answering your question now. I think you're referring to a Facebook post on my account when I was on my work account when I was looking to find students who was interested in this campaign so that we can get um, accounts and anecdotal evidence of the experience we've been through. So in reference to that, that was me saying that we actually want students engaged before we join the national campaign, as I think Stratlight, for example, has launched a big campaign about it but I don't think that we can accomplish much if we hijack their campaign without first having students um, showing an interest in this one. Does that make sense? Any more questions? Yep. Andrew Fry, Vice President, Students for Independence. Um, I think this definitely highlights the problem. I'm just worried that the council resolution is a bit muddled and that is it compatible to lobby a better service from Circuit Laundry while also reconsidering their position as the provider? I'm not sure that those aims are really compatible. I think maybe one should be prioritized over the other. Um, does that make sense? Is that question somewhere in there? Yes, are they compatible goals? Does, does the, whoever is representing this motion, do they believe that these are compatible goals? Can they actually both be pursued when they kind of 
one wants to engage with circuit laundry and one wants to move away from circuit laundry, and that seems a bit conflicting. Um, Cecilia Wolbeck, Senior President, um, as I do not write this, but my interpretation of this is that unless the university, um, unless we can put pressure on circuit laundry to deliver better quality and more affordable services, then the university should reconsider this. That is my interpretation of it, that if we cannot get them to provide better services at a reasonable cost, then we should reconsider our um, contracts with them. That's how I read it. Does that answer the question? <coughs> Okay, <laughs> we take that. Any other questions? Uh, Jack? Um, Jack Bogue, debater. Um, essentially, considering that Circuit Laundry have a virtual monopoly over almost all university accommodation, um, almost all university accommodation across the United Kingdom. To what extent do you believe it feasible that um, to actually try and find an alternative provider, considering the rel bas the basic monopoly that Circuit Laundry Act currently holds? Uh, hello, Isla Scott, sports officer. Um, like Celia was just saying, I believe the intention of this, this motion is firstly to lobby both the university and circuit to provide a better service, and then, if that's not possible, to go with another provider. To be honest, Jack, I think anything's possible with the right attitude, and if you have... <laughs> yeah, there we go. And I believe if we are able to get enough students behind us in Aberdeen to support our campaign, it will then work well with Strathclyde's campaign and hopefully it will become a nationwide campaign where students, sorry, NUS campaign, um, and hopefully it will become a national NUS campaign where students can vent their frustrations and let big companies like Circuit know that they are not doing their jobs properly and through that we'll be able to get better service from them. Does that answer your question? Yes, it answers the question. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Aya. Uh, any more questions regarding this? Uh, no, we would then be moving. Uh, are there any more speeches against this motion? Uh, no. No. We would then be moving on to vote. Everyone in favour of this motion, please raise your card now. Yeah, thank you. Everyone against this motion, please raise your card now. And everyone in abstention, please raise your card now. Thank you, and this motion passed as well. Yay. Um, next motion, Thomas. Um, hi, sir. Can we get a microphone up there? But just to Thomas. Thomas, can you just stand up very quick? Can you put your hand up? Yep, yeah, there you go. Thank you. Hello, Tomas Pizarro Scuti, uh, Vice Chair of the Communities Committee. Well, essentially, this motion is quite uh, straightforward. Our aim is that uh, students that like, will be going to the climate strikes, they will not be penalized if they strike. Uh, I would like to highlight that protesting is a human right which is guaranteed by the Human Rights Act in the European Convention, also in the uh, Human Rights Charter of the United Nations. Right, we started striking a year ago in March and many of the students that are here, I've seen you striking and many of you have raised concerns about you being penalized for striking, which is not quite good. So I urge you to vote in favor of this motion so we can all strike and collectively change the world. Thank you. Are there any questions regarding this motion? And again, please, questions, not arguments. It's guys' questions. Yes, Derek. Uh, first, yeah, we're just gonna do the triangle there. Hello, Derek Gardner, Society's Union. 
Uh, procedural motion for a quorum check. Do you have a seconder? Derek, do you have? Yeah. Yeah, then. Would you like to give a speech for this motion, uh, for this procedural motion? I think quorum check can be done without procedural motion. It's just, it seemed irregular not to take one at the start. And um, from previous OSA AGMs and GMs, that's been the standard procedure to take a quorum check at the start. It wasn't done this time, so I thought um, we should get it done at this point. Thanks. Um, just, just to clarify that the quorum check was done. It was just not publicly announced. <laughs> Enough people were there. Anyway, uh, speech against. Yeah, Jack, um, can we just? We can't have a point of order while we're considering another one. <laughs> yeah. One minute, please. Hello? Yeah, there we go. Right, Jack Bogue, debater. So, right, so at the moment, I think that, um, I think that um, quorum checks are all well and good so long as they're not actually being used to subvert, uh, to subvert motions being debated and then therefore going down and down the line to general meeting after general meeting after general meeting where every single time you get people going for quorum, quorum's not tad, and it just goes on in this endless cycle. Can we just get this done in this one meeting so we don't have to go to more general meetings? Thank you very much. Right, we'll be now voting on uh, whether to, guys, we will now be voting on whether to do a quorum check or not. Uh, just a general reminder if I, yeah. So everyone that is in favor of a quorum check, please raise your card now. <laughs> everyone that is against a quorum check, please raise your card now. Okay. And everyone uh, that is abstaining, please raise your card now. Cool, thank you very much. We're not doing a quorum check then. Is your, is your procedural motion still relevant? Uh, yeah, I just want to move on. So you want to move, di move directly to a vote? Yes. Okay, are there any more questions on this? Uh, yes, green t-shirt, sorry. Don't know your name. Um, thank you, uh, George Taylor, Aberdeen Legis Labour Students. Um, just pardon my ignorance if this is wrong. Uh, note to uh, rest upon European Convention on Human Rights. Am I right in saying that's EU and we, it expires at the end of the year or is European Convention on Human Rights longer and not part of the EU? Um, yeah, Thomas, please answer. Thomas is our scrutiny by the of the Community Committee. And get the microphone off mute, please. Do I have to present myself okay. again or? No, 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 that's Okay, fine. right. Uh, as far as I am aware, the United Kingdom is still part of the European Convention on Human Rights. They can't leave it yet. So we're still in this, uh, how, is, how is it called? The yeah, we're, we're, we're still part of that. I hope that answers your, your question. Um, yes, okay, behind you. Thank you. Um, I'm Anna. I'm president of the Mooting Society. In terms of that, you are correct because the ECHR is a different document that you sign under and is separate from Brexit, so don't worry on that. Um, but my question is in relation to if there's strikes around, for example, major assignments or exams, how are you going to make sure that somebody isn't penalised when, for example, if you have seminars, you have to go to so many before um, issues arise? Or with exams, how would you even try to reschedule that if you have a strike on? It's just a general query on that. Mustafa Marburg, Fossil Free Coordinator. The strikes are organised by students, meaning that the date of the strike, we aim as much as possible 
um, will not coincide with any of those. But in the rare chance that that does happen, um, we also will do its best if this motion is passed. However, one or two students may not be able to join the strike on that day, and that's perfectly fine too. More questions? Yeah. Flowery shirt. Spaceship, sorry. That's the mute button, yeah. This, okay. Uh, Carolina Lopez, uh, MCO, Marshall Chamber Orchestra. Um, my question is, are there any measures for us to not be penalized if we go to any other type of strike? Mustafa Marburg, Fossil Free Coordinator. For students, as far as I'm aware, no. Okay, uh, yeah, one row down, Rodine. Uh, Radin, a BME Students Forum convener. So just following on from that, if that's the case, why is this limited to just the climate strikes? Tomas? Yeah. Hello. Well, essentially because uh, this is the only strike that has been led by students in recent times, so it's just a practical thing. However, I will be happy to write a new motion uh, adding all the reasons for a striking. However, I would really encourage you to vote in favor of this because otherwise we will have to start all over again. And the next strike is this Friday. So it would be amazing if we could pass this before Friday so we can start loving the university by tomorrow. Just one second. Oh, okay, yeah, uh, so here just ask, can you all speak loud? It's very hard to hear you on stage. Just like a general reminder for everyone. Paul. Uh, Society's Union. Um, you use a lot about like human rights, but you're only really covering for, of course, the climate change thing. If you're really gonna tout human rights, then shouldn't you be trying to apply it for all people, not just the rights of those who agree with you? Quiet. Mustafa Marburg, Fossil Free Coordinator. Just, just a bit louder. Mustafa and a bit quieter, Marburg, everyone else. Fossil Free Coordinator, yes. Additionally, uh, we've only been doing this for a year, and we're the first to do this. So if other groups were passionate, they could have done this too. I'm very happy to work with Thomas to pass a, mo pass a motion, but I agree wholeheartedly. I don't care what your opinion is, that you should also be allowed to strike with no consequence. Okay, yes. Sorry. <laughs> By the way, sorry if I don't see anyone, if you just like, just hold, yeah, Albert, I can see you. Uh, just hold your account, just basically wave. Yes, Dania can also see you. Hi, Michaela, floorball president. I'm just wondering about the part with the exams. How do you intend of having AUSA or whoever make sure that people aren't just saying that they're not going to the exam? Like, they're planning on going to the strike, but they're actually not going on a strike? Because it feels a bit unfair towards those who are going to their exams. Like, how do you... How do you think, how do you plan on having this checked that people are actually going on the strikes and not just skipping exams? Uh, hello, yes, I think that's a very good question. Uh, I think Mustafa kind of answered that already. So just to give you some context, uh, we, the people that are organizing the strikes are part of uh, an organization called the Aberdeen Student Climate Network. So that's the group that is behind the strikes. And we will never choose to have a strike in the same day we have exams. Uh, 
Yeah, I hope that answers your, your question. So we, we won't have a strikes in the weeks where people have exams. Okay, there's a lot of questions on this issue, so we'll be limiting the amount of questions. Um, so Alba has had her hands up forever. Um, Alba, um, Environment and Ethics Committee. I was wondering, I, I mean, I know that this motion is very specific about climate strike, but I was wondering with the UCU strikes coming up, if, it, and I know this isn't, I don't know exactly how this works, but you, you can probably tell me, um, if it would be possible to add an amendment, as in right now, today, here, um, to this motion to include the UCU strikes and how that would work and if we could actually do that because I know that some motions have been amended during meetings like not postponed so would that be possible Yes, it will be possible. How do we do that? I mean, like, what, what do we do now? So the proposal would have to agree with the amendment and then we would need to discuss the amendment as its own standing one as well. Okay. Does it go back to Thomas? I would also be happy to add all sorts of strikes. Yeah, we can do that. I would, I would just kind of want to clarify that my point is to the UCU strikes only for now, because I don't know what other strikes are happening, but I would want to include the UCU strikes just because, like as a sort of last minute um, emergency amendment, because it's happening mm -hmm. soon. Yeah, it's perfectly okay. I think it's the student body that should choose what they want to, to have. So, yeah, let's go for Guys, it. can you speak a bit louder so we can take it for the minutes? Yes, I think it's a good idea. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what happens now? Do you have a seconder? Okay. Right, so one second. Uh, Thomas, are you willing to include all human rights issues? Yeah, well, I want to ask you a question. So I think what they plan to do is to allow the pro-life people to have their own strikes. Now, uh, I honestly think that... Thomas, we're not doing guess work here. The question yeah. was, are you willing to include all human rights issues in your motion? Can yes, I only because I think their strikes will be very unsuccessful. Could I, could I, could I? <laughs> um, could I specify, could I specify what I meant by organized strikes by an organization that, such as ASCN, UCU, if you have an organization that is actually organizing the strike, not just like a student that decides to go on a strike. So I feel like that's an important clarification. Daria? Hi, 
Hi, Daria, Education Officer. Just a very quick point of clarification. I understand where Alba's coming from with the suggestion to include UCU strikes in this motion, but it is very important to recognize that if this is passed now, there is no realistically a chance to successfully lobby in time for any of the planned strikes for this upcoming semester as it currently stands. This is just the reality of how much time it takes for lobbying to take place and for action then to be undertaken based on that lobbying effort. So um, that unfortunately, I, I am pretty confident, cannot happen uh, for, for this upcoming strike. This is just uh, as a point of clarification. Uh, so that there are no unrealistic expectations when we pass this motion. Thank you. Later. Then I'm happy to withdraw that comment completely and just go back to the original motion if we can. We're doing, we're doing that, we're going back. Um, Tomas, are you happy with keeping the motion as it is and moving on to a debate? Cool, we'll be doing that then. So we're moving, yeah, we're closing questions, we're moving on to a debate. Uh, are there any arguments against this motion? Uh, yep. Keep your, keep your hand up, please. Microphone's coming in. Andrew Fry, Vice President, uh, Students for Independence. Um, I think the sentiments of this motion are really good, um, but I think this could seriously undermine the academic quality of the university. You say that you wouldn't propose strikes during exam times, but there's a lot of continuous assessment that goes on. There's a lot, a lot of learning happens through class participation. If you turn up to a tutorial and half the people are not there, how conducive is that going to be to your learning? If you're part of a group project or group presentation, which are already hard enough, what happens when a key person in that group just decides they don't feel like contributing because they're going on a strike? I think this could be seriously exploited by students most people would probably not exploit it, but I think there's a chance that someone's academic performance is seriously affected because of irresponsible members of the student body. And I think the risk of that, I'm sure we've all been in a situation where we've had a group project and someone's let us down and we know how bad it feels and, and it affects our grades. Or we go to a tutorial and nobody speaks. The chances of that happening and affecting our education are going to be further increased. I think you know, the actual resolution says that who wish to strike for climate justice. That could be anywhere in the world. There's strikes going on everywhere all the time. So you could technically use this motion to make yourself a, a distance learning student when you're not supposed to be. What, what's the motivation to come to class? Everyone likes an extra day off, but this is just so open to exploitation. I think it's going to undermine the academic quality for the rest of the student body. Thank you. Please remain respectful. I've said that many, many times. Um, just checking, is, uh, is there a sp speech for this motion? Yeah, is there a speech against this motion? Okay, yeah, we're starting with four. Uh, Mustafa, yep. Yeah. Mustafa Mabert, um, fossil free coordinator. Before I address some of Andrew's point, okay. While I agree, I think that there aren't enough strikes and there aren't enough people. As you said, the risk of this actually happening is very low. Most of the students will attend a strike, um, but there will be some that exploit this. I think the chances of this happening to an extent that it significantly affects your education is near zero because the people that would skip out on a tutorial if need be, they can skip two per semester, to my knowledge. So I believe that this will not change it significantly. As I said, it's only once or, or twice per semester um, um, at maximum. So I do not think it's going to impact your education. I generally also believe that striking is in its own right an edu a learning experience, especially as a student of politics. To, for me to be out there, part of 1,200 students, 
or outside Mariscal College having an actual impact and leading to an environmental, um, an environmental motion to be discussed and to be passed by the Aberdeen City Council later to be rejected is in its own, by, by its own virtue, a learning experience that we should encourage. And I believe that that outweighs the impact it will have on education. Thank you. Thank you. And I believe Daria wanted to speak again. Yeah, then do that now. Do you have a microphone? Thank you, uh, Daria, Education Officer. Before I begin, I would like to state that I am not against the sentiment and the reasoning behind this motion. I fully support striking for climate on Fridays and generally, and just the movement as a whole. That being said, I have a concern that by um, lobbying for this, we might actually induce a detrimental effect to the youth climate movement. And let me explain the reasoning behind this. With any strike, and I'll take the UCU upcoming strike as an example, when someone chooses to go on strike, they, they are withholding their labor, and they know what the consequences of that are. In the case of UCU, it would be staff having their pay docked. For students, it would be they get marked absent from tutorials. And they choose to strike nonetheless, and this is what shows that the cause is so important, which is why UCU strike and UCU-affiliated staff go on strike to show that even though they will have that detriment, they'll have their pay docked, they still believe that it's important to strike. By removing that situation, it makes it so accessible that it might undermine the importance of the movement. And I hope that comes across as a reasonable argument. I hope that makes sense. But this is my one concern with the motion, and I would like to uh, bring that up. So thank you. Thank you very much. Do we have a speech yet, Thomas? Yeah, I would like to propose a procedural motion so we can just go straight to the vote. Do you have a seconder? Seconder. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's just vote on that then. Uh, could I see everyone that is in favor of moving straight to a vote, please raise your card now. Okay, everyone that is against moving straight to a vote, please raise your card now. Yeah, thank you. And everyone that is an abstention of this. Okay, we'll then be moving straight to a vote. So we are voting on this motion. Everyone who supports this motion, please raise your card now. Should we start counting? This seems fairly close, so we're going to start counting. So please make sure to keep your card up and visible. Yeah, everyone that got a hand up, just take it down. Thank you. Could we see the nose, please? No, right? uh, yeah, everyone is voting against this motion. Please raise your card.
Thank you very much. And could we see the abstentions? Okay, yeah. Thank you. This motion passes. And that is all the motions. We will now be moving on to bylaw amendments. Just a gentle reminder, exactly same procedure. Small difference is that now a two-thirds majority will be required for this motion uh, to pass. So the first bylaw amendment is proposed by Derek. Could we get a microphone up there, please? Hello, Derek Gardner, Society's Union. I'm proposing this motion because uh, the procedural motions have historically been used to try and shut down debate, um, to stop um, spe enough speeches for or against for people to get a proper understanding of what it is they're debating. Now, what you, I, I understand concerns about time and about wanting to move on, uh, but I think that people need to uh, make decisions which are based on the facts, uh, either for or against. Obviously, many student councillors will come in with not much knowledge of the issue, so if they can hear uh, speeches for or against, that will uh, make better quality and more informed decision making. And it will also uh, give student councillors the time they need to debate, and that is their main purpose in student council. There'd be no point in having it if there wasn't time to debate things like motions. So that's why I'm proposing this, thank you. Thank you very much. Do we have any questions regarding this motion? Uh, no, okay, sorry, yep. Um, if, you, if you want to ask a question, please hold up your voting card because it's quite bright so I can actually see it, yep. Like that. Hello, Aurora Bukeri. Um I'm social secretary of the Lit Society. Um, Derek, you say you want to encourage debate and I think a fair deal of debate has happened tonight. So why every time that the conversation is turning somewhere that you don't like, you ask for a quorum check? Because that's is not asking a debate. That was not a question about the motion, and I said that many times that it's supposed to be questions about the motions and not about your personal feelings or arguments disguised as questions. You two questions, are there arguments disguised as questions or are there questions about the motion? <laughs> Hello. Um, Boris Bedron, Paul Society. So does this motion also apply to quorum checks? Does it also cover quorum checks? Uh, quorum checks are dealt with under a separate bylaw, but in student council we don't normally need to have quorum checks because usually we're well over quorum. Um, that's the answer to your question, I hope. Does? Um, yes, two over, basically. Is it on? Uh, Caroline, Ethics and Environment and Ethics Committee. Um, so in AGM Resolves, it does say no procedural motion may be proposed until there have been at least four rounds of floor speeches. Does this apply to procedural motions that may be done out of a debate over a motion, for example, during um, sabbatical officer reports or any other part of a student council meeting or an AGM? Um, no, because there's not normally speeches for and against sabbatical officer work reports and, and the like. It's usually just motions. Um, of course, this is only if there's enough interest to have those four rounds of floor speeches. It wouldn't happen if there wasn't enough interest, if there wasn't enough people either speaking for or against. It's only just so if there's interest there that people will engage, and I think it encourages people to engage. 
Thank you. Any other? Yep. Yeah, I just wondered then what the honourable gentleman proposes we do if we get stuck in a circular argument between Name two parties that disagree. Name oh, Matthew call. Kerr, Aberdeen University Circus Society President. Uh, yeah, just how do you propose we don't all end up here forever? Uh, that's why there's the four rounds of floor speeches, uh, so that after four rounds of floor speeches, you can propose a procedural motion to move straight to a vote if the debate's not going anywhere. But f I think that's a fair number because there's a lot different student councillors can bring to the table in terms of uh, having an informed debate. Yeah, thank you very much. More questions? Uh, yeah, Daria. Hi, Daria, Education Officer. I would just like a clarification whether this motion refers to a procedural motion to move to a vote or all procedural motions as um, stipulated in bylaw 6.8.3. Thank you. Sorry. Uh, all procedural motions stipulated in the bylaw. Yeah, Caroline again. Is it on? Okay. Uh, yeah, Caroline, Environment and Ethics again. Uh, could you please explain your reasoning behind the two-thirds majority as opposed to a simple majority for the um, second AGM resolves? Because there are certain procedural motions that do require a two-thirds majority to pass. And I would think something as important as stopping the debate and moving straight to a vote ought to have overwhelming support in order to pass, as other procedural motions that do have a, require a two-thirds majority do. Thank you. Um, Paul? Uh, would this just be for student council or would this include AGMs? It would include all forums that are governed by the bylaws and I, correct me if I'm wrong, but I assume that's AGMs as well as uh, student council. Leah, do you know? Yes, uh, student council follows the same, AGM follows the same procedures as student council, so that would apply to the AGM as well. Okay, any other questions? Luis. Um, Louis, community officer, just because I'm bad with numbers, how long would four rounds of speeches be if they were to happen? I'd say between 10 to 15 minutes, but I caveat that by saying only if there's enough interest would it end up taking that long. Thank you. Um, any other questions? Also, last question we're going to take. Okay, or not. Um, are there any arguments against this motion then? Um, Jack. Jack Bogue, debater. So basically, in my opinion, I think um, and student council already um, take, takes an amount of time that already takes up a significant portion of your average student councillor's day, right? So from there, I would worry that this motion would be an example to use it, um, to ba basically to filibuster so that you get circular arguments for and against 10, 50 minutes for every single motion. And that is then just, bec so basically what I want to stop is that this becomes a kind of waste of time for every for student council for making sure that student council is not is as l only as long as it needs to be because yeah with the greatest respect I as a student councillor don't particularly like listening to just circular arguments filibustering through so that yeah I, so that then it then becomes a little bit of a waste of my time thinking why am I sitting here listening to the same things being said again and again and that's what the procedural motion to move straight to a vote for should be for it should be to stop filibuster in addition to 
making sure that there's like interest, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, is making sure that we don't have filibustering circular arguments at student councils, at AGMs, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, please oppose. Uh, just to check, do we have spe a speech for this motion? Okay, yeah, do we have a speech against? Yeah, um, then, I'm so sorry, very up top. Uh, Mikhail Beshkov, uh, Education Committee. Uh, I just think that the strongest arguments for is what happened 10 minutes ago, as there were still people that uh, wanted to express different viewpoints on the matter, but the very person who proposed the motion voted to move on with to a vote and ostensibly removed all discussion. And at the very least, if this doesn't pass in its current state, it should be forbidden for the proposer or the seconder to just say, can we guys just move on to confirm what I want? Because that removes all debate. And um, it was said that like, uh, the term waste of time was uh, mentioned. I don't think taking all viewpoints into account is a waste of time when an important decision should be taken. And that's all. Thank you. I believe Dario had a question. Hi, Daria, Education Officer. I have a question, and I apologize for not asking it earlier. I was just going through the bylaws to kind of look at all the different procedural motions that exist. And I would like to ask the proposer whether you are willing to amend this motion so that we only look at um, motions that suggest that we move to a vote as opposed to all the other options, some of which concern um, whether the chair is impartial, um, whether um, the meeting should be closed for whatever reason. So are you happy to amend this so that it only concerns motions to uh, move to a vote, as is the procedure in city council and many other public forums? Um, thank you. Uh, yes, I'm happy to make the amendments. Just one second. Hello, it is me again. Um, I am looking at the bylaws, and according to them, Daria Education Officer, by the way, um, if we and if the proposer is happy with the amendment, we need to um, move this matter to the next meeting, which would mean student council. Does that sound reasonable? So, why would it need to go to student council? because that's what it says in the bylaws. But, but I do agree that if there is agreement, um, we could possibly vote on whether to hear the amended motion or the original motion. That should be fine as well. Uh, so we vote on that and then hear either one in the student council. Is that what you want to do? 
I believe we can now uh, vote. Um, Leah uh, can call a vote on whether we'd like to hear the amended motion uh, as that you um, second or the original motion, and then we can proceed with whatever we choose. Does that sound reasonable? Yes, yeah. Okay. okay, everyone that wants to hear the amended version, please raise your hand now. Okay, thank you. Everyone that wants to hear the original version, please raise your hand now. Cool, any amendment, uh, sorry, any abstentions? Thank you very much. Just one second. Okay, so we are going to hear the amended version now. Just as a reminder, Dara, can you sum up what the amendment was? Daria? Daria? Yeah. Can you sum up what the amendment was? Yeah, well, it's, it's on your way. Hi, um, it is I. Um, no, um, so the amendment is to suggest that we hear um, four rounds of speeches, is that correct? So eight speeches overall, um, in just for, and have that for just a procedural motion that suggests that we move to a vote as opposed to all other procedural motions, uh, just to make sure that other procedural motions that are important can also be considered. Um, and also just to make the point that according to our bylaw, speeches should be limited to two minutes each, I believe. Uh, so yeah, this is the amendment, thank you. Okay, thank you. Are there any speeches against this, uh, uh, this motion as a whole now? So we've already voted on the amendment. That's what we're hearing now. That was just a summary. Are there any speeches against this motion as a whole, Alba? Sorry. Um, hi. So while I, I, I do, uh, Alba, Environment and Ethics Committee, sorry. Um, I do sympathize with the, the purpose of the motion, but I, I have concerns with I mean, apart from the issues that have been already brought up, um, that you know, we already vote on whether or not to approve of the procedural motions. Um, that there could be a circular debate that just goes on forever and ever, um, and waste everyone's time. But I think my main concern is also that there are some motions that can be sensitive in nature, um, like we had, for example, during the last student council, and that this could be used to not end a debate that could be harmful potentially for students' mental health and just kind of against safe space policy in general. Um, there are some, some debates that maybe should, be, should not be had and maybe that procedural motion, motion should apply um, to certain topics. I don't know if that kind of makes sense. I hope it did. Thank you. Are there, is there a speech for this motion? Okay, um, which means we're now moving that to a vote. Everyone that is in favor of this motion, please raise your hand now. Oh no, sorry, 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 stop, sorry. Procedural motion, we're voting on the procedural motion, whether to move this to a vote. Um, so everyone that's in favor of this procedural motion, please raise your card now. Okay, thank you very much. Everyone that is against this procedural motion of moving this directly to a vote, please raise your card now. Thank you very much, and everyone that is in abstention. Thank you very much. So this is moved directly to a vote, um, and now we'll be moving on to uh, words. We'll now be voting on to uh, on this motion. So everyone that is in favour of this motion, please raise your card now. Everyone that is against this motion, please raise your card now. Thank you very much, and everyone that is in abstention. Just because we're now dealing with a two-thirds majority, we uh, are going to make sure that it's... Okay, as there was an overwhelming majority against this motion, this motion does not pass and the bylaw will not be amended. Mm -hmm. 
Moving on to bylaw nine amendment, Louise. Louise, community officer, this uh, bylaw amendment uh, concerns the um, recognizing Aberdeen Student Climate Network as uh, an affiliated group um, of AUSA. Um, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, the Aberdeen Student Climate Network is uh, a collective of students who organizes climate strikes, but also aim to create um, ecological um, uh, awareness trainings and um, education for students. Um, um, yes, that's about it. Um, this is, please vote to accept this uh, group um, in Alsa. Thank you very much. Are there any questions um, regarding this motion? Yeah, over there, space you should. That will be your nickname from now on. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, Carolina Lopez, Marshall Chamber Orchestra. Just wondering, w how does that affect the climate network, like, practically? What does it mean that they're affiliated to AUSA or not? Um, so affiliated groups uh, will have, like, support in terms of, like, room bookings, in, time, in terms as well of support from staff. Um, so that's what would change. They would uh, officially be able to book uh, university rooms uh, and have uh, recognized support from AUSA. Okay, thank you. Alba, also a question. Um, I, I was just wondering, what's the difference with an actual society? Just because I don't really know. Um, so the groups are defined um, as a providing a service or an, an aid to development uh, for students. Uh, that's uh, and that they do not uh, fit the description of a society. And. and one of the key differences is that groups are uh, financially independent from AUSA, according to the bylaw. Yeah, over there. Um, yeah. George Taylor, Aberdeen Labour Students. Uh, can I just ask the proposers, for context, what are the five student groups already affiliated with Alsa, just for context? From memory, and I apologize if I'm forgetting any, it's uh, Aberdeen Student Radio, the Gaudi, which is the student's newspaper, GCTV, which is the TV news, CASE, which is Consent Awareness and Sexual Education Group, and Nightline, um, Bookends. Sorry. Okay, thank you. Um, more questions, Radine. Uh, Radine, BME Students Forum, convener. Um, just a question, um, why does the ASCN not qualify as a society? Um, so um, when I met with the um, students from ASEAN, um, they want to be able to um, be independent financially from AUSA, and um, as well they qualify under the um, like the um, they qualify as they provide like a service uh, and a development, which is one of the uh, requirement for becoming a group. Uh, as of why they don't qualify as societies. Uh, there's no definition of societies uh, currently that I can um, bring up, um, but that's one of the reasons why um, we, well, we're proposing this motion for them to become uh, as a group because they qualify um, in terms of providing a service or development. 
Thank you. Other questions? Yes, Derek. It, microphone is on its way. Can you pass this up towards Derek? I am once again asking for a quorum check because a lot of people have, le have left. As you can see, uh, about at, at least uh, 50 people have got up and left since uh, uh, we last had a quorum check. And we don't need a procedural motion to do this. We can just do it under bylaw 5.3. Any member can ask for a quorum check. Thank you. We'll be counting then. With 231 students present, we lost quorum. Uh, therefore, the AGM is closed immediately. Oh, yeah. sorry. Um, therefore, the meeting is closed immediately, and all re remaining, there we go, remaining ma uh, matters will be moved to the next student council. Thank you so much for coming. We made it far. Hi, very quick, sorry, hi. Uh, voting cards, please just leave them on the table. Thank you.